Okay. Father God, we thank you. We come before your presence, Father God. Um, as we draw near, we thank you that uh, you have promised that you will draw near. And Lord, we want to experience your drawing near. Lord, Lord this day, Father God, we just want to uh, be aware of your presence, Lord, and uh, whatever you're bringing into our lives, Master, we just want to receive it because we know it is good. Father God, we, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the wisdom that is in your word, Lord. We thank you, God, that it's it's not all theory, but it's something that we can, Lord, apply and live each and every day, Master. And so we we just bless your name. We thank you for entrusting us, O oh God, with the engrafted word, which is able to save our soul, O oh Father God, change it and transform it. And Lord, make our thoughts and imaginations and Lord, everything thrive and flourish, Lord, and it just comes alive because of your word and the work of your spirit. And so we, Lord, we invite that work, Lord, into our hearts, even today, Father God, we thank you, we bless your name, and we give you all the praise, even as we commit ourselves, Lord, and all the sessions of today, Lord, into your mighty hands. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we missed uh, last class. And that was on October 2nd, no? Or 3rd, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so today we are continuing with what we've been looking at. Uh, we saw that, you know, organizing people uh, uh, is a very important skill because people are, um, you know, are a very important resource precious and in the eyes of God and uh, we know that in terms of ministry that uh, we cannot do ministry in a vacuum we are going to be you know engaging with people sorry people ministering to people and uh, ministering along with people right so so some of those things uh, we looked at last time and uh, so a very important skill is uh, delegation okay delegation is to give away some of our responsibilities to others so that you can be free, so that it's an opportunity for others to serve. And so many wonderful things happen because we delegate responsibilities. Right? We see that things can be done effectively, uh, things can be done quicker, uh, more can be achieved uh, when we do, when we delegate. Right? And we need to know how to delegate, and that's an important skill to learn. So we looked at several things about delegation okay uh, another uh, uh, thing that we need to look at when it comes to people is um, uh, the skill or the learned ability to motivate okay so people have emotions which go up come down people get encouraged people get discouraged uh, people go through difficult times just like just like you know we do right so um, no person is a machine that can function day in and day out, right? Hundred uh, percent effectiveness. Uh, we all have struggles, challenges, and life happens. And so, um, so there are times when people need to be our team, ministry team, or, or ourselves. You know, we need to be. We need to motivate, right? Or uh, motivate others, provide motivation to others, uh, in order to achieve, in order to function well. Right, effectively. So, what is motivation? It is to give someone a good reason, right? It's, it's to give someone a good reason to continue doing something, something good, right? So, it's to give enough reason for people to take action, to to come back to what they were doing well, to get back to how they were living. Uh, so, it is uh, to give a good reason. So, when we say good reason, it is not just intellectual logical reasoning it goes beyond that right um, but it starts with that it is to give a strong reason so if uh, you know if people are uh, not doing something which they were supposed to do if people are doing something which they are not supposed to do um, you know along with other things like correction and warnings and so on there needs to be motivation Right? We need to motivate. We see a lot of motivation in scripture, right? Anything that you can think of, 
motivation people motivating others or god motivating uh, others in scripture in the bible yeah gideon you, you want to use the mic yeah, please sir no <laughs> use the mic <laughs> okay yeah so what about gideon yeah so angel mm so it kind of jolts him up uh in the sense it says the angel comes and says arise man of valor that he's hidden he's hiding he's threshing gray you know in the uh, corn uh, i mean so he is he, uh, for fear of the midianites and the angel comes and proclaims that identity and says arise man of valor and he's like he continues to say okay i am so and so i'm so and so uh, but then you know there's so yes we can look at that as a yeah, Je- jeremiah yeah the, the commissioning itself yes the lord says uh, yeah uh, i am with you uh, till the end of the ages and therefore you know all authority has been given to me and then therefore you go um uh so any anything specific about paul and timothy that uh, that you can think of hmm. so uh, one thing we can uh, hmm. yeah let no one look down on you because of your youth but uh, be an example in word and and so on yes yeah. and what are you saying nina like calling a son okay right yeah A- addresses him as a son yes um even uh, the lord uh, telling joshua like joshua chapter 1 yeah so be strong be courageous and the people themselves echo the same thing you know be strong be courageous right for the lord your god is with you wherever you go so so not just empty words but they are you know there, there is a reason behind those words there's a, there's a truth and reality of the situation behind those words so that encourages that motivates the person to keep going right or if they are in a place of fear in a place of discouragement to to move forward right so practically if you look at some ways uh, by which we can motivate people right see normally what we think is you know when people say i can't you know we say no you can do it okay so that is a very general statement you know you can do it you no know, i i know you are able you know you can do it um but can we go beyond that right can we go beyond that you know uh, let's say we are addressing a team and we say you know want everybody to be excellent in your work right um and that's a very general statement right so what will really motivate people is when we go into some specifics some specific uh, you know aspects of that work for example if we say you know if we let's say we have a project and we have to complete it in a week to 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 really quantify the time and the kind of effort that you want everybody to put in right saying you know guys we need to work at this 4 hours every day you know you might be doing other other things but let's put in 4 hours every day this week so that we can complete it by friday or complete it by saturday so when we actually quantify the time and the kind of effort or sometimes we might have to say okay we are all we are working all night right we are working through this night and we need to complete it okay so when we uh, when we quantify it then uh, it 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 actually gives um, you know focus and motivates people to do it right but at the same time we can't expect the same effort for a long period of time like over and over and over again you know so we need to give a time saying okay this month or the next three months you know something you set a time limit and say okay let's do this so that motivates people to put in their effort right um second thing is to share in the sacrifice you know as a leader 
uh, we cannot be uh, not involved or not engaged. You know, we if we want to motivate them, yes, there are yes, you know, people have their different uh, what do you call set roles and responsibilities, but we can as leaders in order to motivate, we can share in that right? either in the same task or with the quantum of time that you're putting in saying that, okay, this week, all of us as a, as a team are going, you know, uh, are working towards completing this. So, you know, I'm going to be doing this. Uh, so-and-so is going to be doing this, you know, uh, and each person is going to be doing this. These are different things, but this week we are going to be working together on this, you know, so as we share in that uh, effort, we share in the sacrifice as a leader, then that also motivates, you know, so they they won't think that, okay, they've given, put the, put their load on me, but they're taking it easy, right? So while you might be doing different things, um, uh, something completely different, not, probably definitely not the same task because you could have delegated it, but to communicate that yes you are also going to be putting in the same amount of time and effort motivates others right um the third thing is to to talk about you know the outcome so it will this appeals to your emotion of you know the thrill of success the thrill of achieving something um you know what are we uh, what what are we what reward are we getting what prize are we getting you know, if there is something like that right what are we actually achieving together you know as a team and as a, as individuals uh, so if we can appeal to that aspect that is also good right uh, now there is a negative motivation right negative appeal meaning if there is fear right Sometimes, you know, I think teachers do that in school, college, and right? this is going to be very tough. And if you don't finish, you will fail. And uh, you, there is no hope of reappearing, whatever, you know, some, some kind of a threat saying that if you don't do this, you will fail. Right now, that's a fear. So people do it because of fear. Right. And I know that uh, certain organizations, uh, you know, even in to today's, like maybe a sales organization, whatever, they use fear. What is that fear? Hey, you lose your job or you're going to be shamed. And fear is also a motivating factor. You know, I don't want to lose my face. I don't want to, you know, be ashamed or put down in front of all the people and the whole team, etc. So you, you begin to do it. But when... Uh, you know, when fear is a motivating factor, it will also be something that demotivates us. You know, it can be, it will be short-lived, right? You can only go on so long or so far with fear because it will, you will end up being demotivated, right? So, um, so it's better to motivate people if we are appealing to our, their emotions, you know, like achievement and, you know, um, victory and uh, the completion and accomplishing something. So it's better to appeal to that rather than fear all the time, right? Okay. Um, then um, give people reasons, multiple reasons for doing what you want them to do. So, um, so that's, you know, that because... That's the general thing of motivation. You're giving them enough reason why I should do this and positive uh, reinforcement and positive reasons why they should do. So so motivation is one part of uh, a, a skill that people skill that we need to know, we need to have, right? So um, we need to be, uh, you know, we need to be aware or recognize that the team needs motivation. Right? We need to recognize that people need motivation. And we don't have to wait until people are completely demotivated, right? completely in a place of zero, in order to kind of build them up. We don't have to wait till then, but it can come regularly uh, as we as people do the tasks, you know, it can come uh, at regular intervals. Okay, so uh, we can do it consistently. We can do it maybe, you know, let's say if you if it's a team, you can do it weekly and so on. So this motivation is something that's, that needs to be sincere. Like, because people can see through 
you know if it's flattery if it is insincere people can see through it and uh, and then the next time it will not work right so it it has to be done right okay then the other thing is also inspiration we not only need to motivate but there is there are also moments when people need to be inspired right so what is the difference you know um so inspiration it it appeals to the aspiration of people right it changes the way people think and feel so it's something that happens internally right so that they want to do or they want to take action and uh, some it is it's something that's transformative right people are inspired so um what inspiration does is you know all of us have values right what are values hmm more importance to what are values like what are some values that you have like what are things that you values are simply things that you value which you give worth to you treat them importantly like so some characteristics are valued you know for example truth as a virtue is something that you value integrity is something that you value right maybe there's hard work something that you value or whatever you know uh, uh, you know maybe going deeper sorry punctuality being on time something that you you know value being consistent right so these are things that you know as a person you intrinsically value right these are things that because uh, how do we know that because when 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 you don't see it in other people you get disturbed right when you see falsehood you get disturbed when you see um you know compromise you get disturbed when you see delay you get disturbed so you know that you hold it to a high standard so these are values so when we inspire we inspire the values of people right it's an inspiration it makes a difference in the the uh, to the values that they hold personally and so um so what it does is addresses those values so when we inspire people we are inspiring them to live for truth we inspiring people because these are values that they hold themselves right so um how how do we inspire you know if we want to inspire we need to understand that people need to see it in our lives okay the very thing that we want um the very change that we want the very accomplishment that we want we, they need to see the the effort um that we want to put in you know uh, that we want them to put in they need to see it in our lives right so that's that's the first thing you know to say that we need to be the change right be the change that you want to see in others right so that's the first thing the way by which we uh, by way of inspiration or inspiring people um secondly uh you know we can share success stories right we can share inspirational accounts of how people did it how how people overcame right so similar situations like you know maybe you're talking about a church uh maybe uh, as a church you know they are going through some challenges of maybe persecution maybe outreach uh, you know in terms of growth in terms of outreach you know all those things so as a church you know we go through that so if you are a leader or a pastor in the church to inspire would be to share a similar story right um for example you know i think it's in uh, first peter um or uh, where peter talks about trials right uh, is it in first peter um yeah this one second yeah so he says you are kept by the power of god in this league is verse 6 right first peter chapter 1 verse 
in this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while if need be you have been uh, grieved by various trials right and uh, he talks about the the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to um uh, praise honor and glory at the revelation of jesus okay this is he's talking about the fire fire of uh, or the trial and tribulation but they also another place second peter is it yeah second peter which was Verse 6. No, Second Peter. Um, no, no, no. Uh, no, no, something else. I'm sorry. Maybe it's not Peter, I think. Uh, where he talks about, you know, though you have been um, grieved by various trials, um, yeah, I'll just check online if anybody's put um, a. He's uh, he's actually uh, you know encouraging the church, and uh, he's comparing that to uh, other things that are happening, and um, he's saying that you know oh yeah yeah sorry James yeah. James uh, also talks about that. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, etc., etc. No, but uh, this also is about trials. But then um, there's one more place where he talks about don't do not think it's strange um, that you are going through trials, but this is something that is experienced by the brethren uh, elsewhere also. Um, anyway. Okay, so uh, you know the point is this: that you know when you share stories of how people have gone through similar situations and overcome, right? So it is not some fictional thing. These are real stories, real stories of uh, people overcoming challenges that inspires us, right? I'm sure uh, you know when we when we watch certain videos of the kind of difficulties, the kind of challenges. Maybe you know the kind of difficulties that uh, much more than what we have we are experiencing and uh, what we are going through, right? If it is a you know, greater difficulty, greater challenge, um, and uh, four. <laughs> okay, First Peter four. Okay, twelve and thirteen. Okay, yeah, beloved, do not think it strange. Concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, uh, that when his glory is revealed, that you may be also be gla glad with exceeding joy. Yeah. So um, this is uh, also you know something that he's sharing that you know don't think it's strange, don't think it's unique, it's happening to you, but you're actually partaking of it, um, uh, uh, of Christ's sufferings and so on. You know, how it's happening elsewhere as well. Right. Um, yeah, I think Nina shared it here also. First Peter 4:12. Okay. So the thing is that um, we, um, when we share, you know, it's ins inspirational, right? So that's how we inspire. Also, it's not needn't be just empty words. It's not just be you know rep repetition of okay, we need to do it, we need to get it done, etc. But you know, when we share a real story, it inspires people, right? And appealing to people's value system, that's the third thing, that you appeal to the value of maybe hard work, you appeal to that. Uh, when you talk about punctuality, you know, there's a, uh, you reward that and also inspire them saying, you know, this is how you've done despite all that, you know, you've been able to put in that consistent work, so continue to do that, right? Um, when we have to, if we're inspiring people, uh, we need to also trust. Right? Because inspiration includes empowering people. You know, you train, you empower, meaning you give them the authority, right, to make decisions, to make certain choices. That means that we need to trust them enough to give them the freedom to use that empowerment, right? So you empower them, saying, okay, now you decide 
okay you organize or you decide you do that so that itself is in inspirational to people but the fact is that we need to be able to trust them to release them give them the freedom to make that choice right so suppose you ask someone you know you take care of organizing this evenings meetings right so you know, you are empowering them you are saying okay you are free to decide you are free to choose you are free to do everything that is required you have empowered them but also we need to be able to trust them why because only then will they be able to use that empowering you know use that whatever you empowered them with right um the fifth one is to challenge okay so now many times we think that oh if if you know if there is a difficult task or a very great challenge then people will not be inspired but actually the opposite of that happens because when people are stretched when people see you know a, a big task a huge task which will stretch their capacity their capability then they will be challenged to do it they will be inspired to do it right in terms of maybe physical effort maybe it is challenging to think creatively you know use their brain power maybe it challenges them to um you know let go of certain things right in terms of their the time they are spending so they have to sacrifice certain things so that also inspires right um people okay so challenging people you know challenging people to say that uh, you know you can get this done but you know it's going to require hard work you know are you willing to do that it, it's going to require sacrifice are you willing to do it is going to require this kind of you know physical exertion and um and all that you know maybe lack of sleep etc but are you willing to do that so that also inspires right so we looked at um, five things right to be the change uh if you want to change people you be the change in order to inspire share stories um appeal to their values whatever value systems they have uh, appeal to that trust empower and trust right um and then also to challenge right so when people are stretched when people are challenged they are inspired okay and uh, when we looked at motivation we looked at uh, those four things um that uh, motivation you know when you give uh, when you motivate people give them a time limit uh, for the kind of effort that you are asking them to put in right it always helps because people cannot work uh, infinitely or do things in you know uh, without um, just go on without rest or without kind of a refreshing so you know give the time limit be part of the sacrifice be share in the sacrifice and the effort um appeal to the emotions and also give reasons multiple reasons why they should do it okay so so these are some things that we need to we need to learn okay so if we have not um if you are not used to doing this we need to engage and try to put these into practice okay now we might think okay um you know i don't have a big team i don't have a good you know a huge bunch of people doesn't matter even if it's one other person we can still you know put these into practice and it can be a genuine manner it can be a very sincere manner it need not be something that is fake right insincere okay um another uh, important skill or important part of this whole process of organizing people um is to evaluate okay what does evaluate mean ah uh, consider consider mm yeah so to assess right to evaluate is to assess okay how how am i doing today right so this is where i need to reach this is my target um but how am i have i reached have i reached 20% 30% have i reached halfway am i nearly there right maybe i need to write a book um, a huge report uh, what is my progress right so it is to evaluate to assess okay so um we need to evaluate 
after delegating task after motivating inspiring etc um, we need to evaluate you know how did someone do their work right um, we need to evaluate ourselves right self evaluate and say how did i do it did i do it well uh, we, best way to evaluate ourselves is of course self evaluation we reflect and review okay how did i do this maybe if it's a speech that you gave a sermon that you preached self evaluate okay did i do it well you know where did where did i notice that people were not with me you know they were they were distracted they were not listening where did i sense that i explained it well where did i sense that you know this could have been communicated in a very simple way and i didn't do it right or evaluation also could be you know what kind of effort did i put in did i could i have put in more effort could i have started early to prepare so all those things right so self evaluation so the in the kind of work that people do ministry etc it's good to review and evaluate okay so it always helps us to uh, helps us to do better helps us to avoid the mistakes right avoid the wrongs that we did and helps us to refine the whole thing so that we can do better okay so this review and evaluation is very important but to evaluate we need to have a clear standard right which means that you need to have a you know suppose you want to measure something you need to have a, a, a accurate measuring tape right so it cannot be like you know you use it and then you know another measuring tape says you no know, 12 12 feet and then your measuring feet a measuring tape says you know 11 feet right it cannot be right so it has to be clear um every time you use it it has to be clear so so the thing is when we want to evaluate what are some measurement uh, scales or what are some um metrics you know that's the word metrics that we are using to evaluate okay so somebody suppose somebody gives a let's say a speech okay what are some what are some attributes that you would use to evaluate what are some things that we would use it has to be clear so that it can, it is measurable what are some ways that what are some things that you would use in order to measure or assess okay so uh, clarity in conveying so wh- how would you so what okay so did people understand so clarity okay did people understand so in order so that can be one one criteria to assess but also we need to have a way to find out if people understood right so the response so it can be very it can be a subjective thing like okay um you can see okay did people actually receive when you ask questions at the end of the session did people understand you know a most of it it also it's two ways we know people who are listening should also put in that effort but you know overall did people understand what else okay so um you, you, okay so you're saying the speaker or the one who's presenting did they prepare well no is, is that what you're saying yeah so did they prepare well so that will also be in terms of uh, how well did like what was the content of what they presented okay the way in which they presented was the first thing so the content of what what did they speak what was the content of what they shared right so so in that also we need to have clear clarity in terms of measuring right did they give any notes did they do any powerpoint did they you know uh, what were those two or three things that they shared was it of value right was it something that we had already known so many things right 
So the thing is, when we when we want to evaluate, measure the performance of people, it has to be clear. It cannot be something ambiguous, right? So when we are saying, okay, you know, uh, today this is what happened, and uh, I feel that it 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 was uh, it could have been better for X Y Z reasons. You know, you're just giving five reasons. So it has to be clear in terms of you know certain you know some sometimes certain things are uh, kind of abstract right very subjective um but even there as far as possible if we give clarity right uh, to assess then it will help like for example you know when we have a like an audition like a worship team audition we are hearing somebody sing right so now you can't just say Oh, that's a nice. They sang well, so they are selected, right? So that's a very subjective thing. You need to break it down to, you know, did they sing in pitch, right? Did they sing in pitch, or did you know? So you give a criteria. Okay, out of ten, how much can you give? You know, did they make any mistake? Did they sing in pitch? Did they sing according to time? The rhythm, you know, or was it like they were very flexible, you know, slowing here, going fast here? Did they sing? So that is another thing. Then you can you can also say, you know, how was their tone? So tone can be harsh, tone can be very breathy, tone can be, you know, so all those aspects. Tone can be um, pleasant. So you can also give a criteria, you know, out of ten, what is it? So in this manner. You are able to give, or you are able to assess something, you know, assess the the task which was done. Okay. So, I know it's it sounds very, you know, very detailed, but it always helps, right? In order to evaluate the performance, so that we can give a good feedback. So it wouldn't be like you know this person is saying you know this person is in a bad mood today, so therefore you know I'm I've got this kind of a feedback. Maybe they're in a good mood; they'll give a better feedback. No, uh, whether good mood or bad mood, you know, the criteria you're using is is proof. You know, it's it's clear data, and so you're giving. So this is you know this is uh, something that we can use, right? So uh, when it comes to, you, you might be thinking, okay, when it comes to ministry, how do we give? Right, the same thing, but we know when it comes to ministry, the certain things can be kind of subjective, um, but we can always. Uh, you know, going by John 15, we see that the Lord is looking for fruit, right? So He's looking at fruitfulness, He's looking at effectiveness, uh, He's looking at productivity. So we can always assess, uh, we can always use clear ways of assessing. Okay. Okay. So that is uh, another aspect of management and of this resource of people, right? Um, okay, what is the other thing that we can look at? Now, this is the difficult part where when it comes to people, when it comes to working with people, um, we need to sometimes let go of people, okay, which means we need to tell people, hey, you and I cannot work together, right? Maybe they are, um, maybe there has been a very, you know, apparent, um, like, uh, you know, maybe uh, then uh, you know in, in terms of performance, in terms of work done, in terms of you know maybe there are things that people did not adhere to, okay? and even though it was it was pointed out, there was no change, right? So we need to have clarity. Okay, we're going to have give this much time. Okay, people need time to change, right? You point out in terms of ability. Right, saying, okay, you need to build this skill. The work is suffering because the skill is skill level is not up to the mark. So you need to upgrade your skill. Maybe it is written skill, you know, writing of whatever you're communicating. Maybe it is something to do with learning some something like maybe a, you know PowerPoint or Excel or learning to do that. Simple. I'm just using an example. You know, so it could be skill that needs to be worked on now if people are 
uh, the people person's work is suffering because that effort into that skill was not made now we need to give time for people to change for people to you know maybe some a couple of you know instances and you give them time to change but if that is there is no change and if there is continuing to impact the work the quality of work and it's becoming a critical thing then and if people are unwilling to right so need, people need to let you need to let go of people and say you know maybe you can do something else somewhere else you know not nothing wrong with you as a person but you know this is not fitting in well here right so when it comes to ability you know that's that's the same thing we we do that but there it, there could also be problems when it comes to the attitude the whole attitude towards the task towards the work the whole attitude towards the vision right so there also it becomes a challenge right so when people say that you no know, my vision is to do something else but i'm still here right i want to do something else but i'm still here and and because of which there is always a conflict right um and there is always a thing of why are we doing it you know why are we doing things here why are we why is our you know so constant conflict with the big picture with the vision so then people need to be told that he you know it's not really working out maybe we need to part ways and so on right and if there is a uh you know definite thing of um of doing the wrong thing in the sense not um not following the rules guidelines um not following it you know flouting the norms uh constant flouting of norms right then there are also there can be warnings there can be time given for correction but if there is repeated you know um, in the repeated manner if there is work done like that then people have to be let go okay so we need to let go but not with hatred we need to let go not with the uh, you know um, breaking the dignity of the person okay sometimes that's what happens right uh, at least in uh, you know a couple of organizations that i worked with um, that is how the boss will let go you know boss will you know just make life miserable and uh, um, and also you know there will always be be a, a conflict there will be contention quarrel argument and it will be very unpleasant right so it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be yes when you know when we are talking about the reality of the thing that that we, you cannot be working in the organization anymore you you think you think about it you know in an organization the resources are used for the person in terms of salary in terms of you know so many things that goes um, for the person why so that the person can produce the work right do a good work contribute and be a blessing to the organization right so that's a responsibility and that's an agreement right that's why you give an offer letter and say this is your task this is your thing this is what you need to do this is your responsibility so if people are not able to carry that out for whatever reason right so then we can communicate that in a nice way we can communicate that in a very dignified way not breaking the person down not you know um uh, breaking the dignity of the person but do it in a nice and pleasant way and say that you know maybe it's time to part ways right um so we should not hesitate to do that right because if there is dk and if you're not dealing with it it's going to affect the team it's going to affect the organization you know eventually if not now eventually so the more we delay you know yes we need to give time for people to change we need to give time give enough grace um uh, you know there has to be grace and time for people to change but if not then there needs to be action and uh, inaction and delay will only cause um for the problems right so like some people follow a three strike policy you know like one so once you tell them second time you tell them and third time then you need to let go of them see but the thing is many times when we warn people we need to tell them about the consequence of it okay let's say somebody is not doing the work well 
yeah we tell them we find out why is it you know are they not did they not understand did they not uh, you know did they not uh, understand the whole thing and is that why they are doing a shoddy work don't they have the resources don't they have the training we need to think of all that right uh, have they understood have they have the tra training do they have the ability right now if all that is provided and still the attitude is that i i don't want to you know i can't do it then we have to give them the consequence of not doing the task you have to tell them hey, if you don't do it and if this repeats then we might have to let you go okay, many times we don't do that right we don't tell them the consequence we don't tell them the seriousness of it and so everybody's like okay you know you didn't tell me you know that it was that serious that it was so so important so people take it lightly so we need to tell them you know verbalize it and say you know if it comes to this if this is not if this is continued then we will have to look for a replacement we will have to change um you know your role uh, or some you know that consequence has to be spelt out verbalized so when we do that then the person understands and there is also your conscience is also clear i already told them once twice thrice and therefore now we have to take action it's not like you did not tell them you told them and still there was no change right so yeah so that brings us to the end of this chapter which is about people and managing people um the next chapter is also on similar lines about one aspect of people management which is conflict and resolving of conflict okay so we will look at it in our next class we'll stop here. any questions here uh, anything that you might want to add um we looked at motivation and uh, yeah inspiration so these are some important things for us um, you know um and this comes by experience this comes by practical um being practically involved so um but these are very very essential delegation you know communication delegation um inspire in, insp inspiring motivation and all these um different things right okay so if there are no questions we'll stop yeah and we'll uh, get back next class thank you god bless